Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lucero Makerspace. Oh, sorry. I'm already thinking about that. Welcome to Lucero Library, and we're doing a fun partnership with Matt and Justin. You guys want to kind of jump in and see what we're doing today? Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, Justin from Artha Hardway, and uh, we're currently working with the Lucero branch uh, with the FCC Florence art program that we teach. Uh, and today we're just gonna talk a little bit about abstract expressionism and uh, Jackson Pollock and a little bit about uh, why we think that's important uh, part of art history and, and how we, we get kind of creative with uh, some of the inmate participants that we work with. So I'm gonna just share a uh, PowerPoint that just gives you a brief introduction on the subject. And I'm Matt, I'm Justin's partner and uh, co-facilitator in the program. And uh, abstract art and abstract expressionism is a very interesting part of the program and a good entryway for the inmates that aren't um, necessarily artists uh, when they enter the program and also a new entryway for people to um, be exposed to different styles of art that aren't just regular uh, prison style illustrations. So uh, hope you enjoy the slideshow and the tutorial. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. So when I was younger, uh, I think I was maybe 19, uh, Ed Harris produced and, and uh, starred, and I believe directed in the movie Pollock, and it just had a tremendous impact on me as a young artist that was still trying to formulate a style. And so I've always really uh, captivated, you know, been captivated by his work. Um, and so he was, you know, around post-World War II, part of the abstract expressionistic movement, um, which is essentially one of the first uh, movements the Americans can really claim as their own. A lot of uh, European artists migrated after the war and during the war uh, to New York. And, you know, he was one of the ones that, you know, had the success uh, while he was still alive. He was on the cover of, uh, I believe, Time magazine and just put a huge uh, splash on um, just New York's art scene, you know, kind of created that movement and that vibe, uh, him and Jasper Johns and some of the guys from that movement. But this is a piece called Lavender Mist, and also known as Number One. Um, Pollock wouldn't really put titles on a lot of his work. He would just uh, associate numbers because a, a lot of what the abstract artists were trying to do was disassociate from any kind of content or form. And so like Matt was saying, we tried to uh, introduce these guys to this style of work just to loosen up their hands a little bit uh, and also just introduce them to just the process of making art. So one of the things we like to do is we'll, we'll show them this, this uh, painting, for example, and we'll, we'll kind of ask them to jump into the piece. It sounds kind of silly, but it, it kind of gives them an idea, um, you know, makes them feel a little bit more vulnerable and introduces just this process, you know, like if you could jump into this painting, what would, what would it feel like? You know, what, what marks would you want to follow? Um, things of that nature. And I know, Matt, you like to talk about that, uh, that experience we had in uh, that step down unit was a real breakthrough for the program, right? Yeah, I mean, just um, in all the program, really, the abstract art is an excellent way to break down barriers. But we, we had a really unique experience of people that um, wouldn't necessarily be working in harmony. And um, we introduced a, a project that was an abstract expressionist project, which we were encouraging them to work together on. And um, to our surprise, they all very much took to the process and um, broke down all their barriers and were able to come together in this creation of an abstract expressionist piece. And it was it was really one of the most moving things that I've ever seen in my entire life, just the nature of uh, seeing people that normally would not, you know, mesh together, just finding total harmony through uh, an, a creative expression. Definitely, yeah, it was, it was awesome because uh, it kind of makes you just jump right into the process. And a lot of guys don't necessarily like to, to be seen, you know, a lot of people like to draw at night, paint at night, and so it kind of forces uh, unity and this idea of working together very quickly. So, I mean, just a little brief, briefly about Pollock. Um, I've already mentioned he was a major, major figure in the abstract movement, um, and so his action paintings kind of gave him this title, you know, Jack the Dripper. And another reason why we introduce uh, Jackson Pollock um, to the uh, CAP program is it kind of breaks down that stigma that a lot of people associate with this kind of art because even even the slideshow kind of represents i guess in essence how popular it's become now um and we've heard a lot of people you know so what you know they splatter paint on a canvas i could do that and we try to break that barrier down and say yeah but you'd have to want to first you know the the kind of quintessential reason for creating anything is because a person's driven to do it right and um so it's a nice balance to 
kind of the stuff that Matt was already talking about where we have this kind of heavy illustrator quality that comes in um, to the program. And these guys are, you know, already steadily making, making a hustle sometimes in some of their units doing um, portraits for, you know, Christmas and birthdays for other, other inmates and uh, doing animal art and uh, things like that, or even tattooing. Unfortunately, that does happen, even though it's, it's not uh, permitted. So to introduce them to this kind of work is just kind of kind of shocks their system a little bit. And we try to break down that wall um, in, in an effort to kind of show them just the, the quality of it. Another interesting thing about this particular work was these were huge paintings. Um, some of them were the size of billboards. I mean, they were just massive. And, you know, he would walk around them. You know, he would he would paint them on an unstretched canvas. And, and so this whole idea of the process became uh, very much a part of the conversation. If you think about art history, that wasn't really something that they talked about. You would just see the final product. Um, and so abstract artists really kind of opened the door to um, the process being considered part of the art. You know, they weren't as interested as in the final result as how they felt doing it, um, the kind of motions and gestures that they did or took to. And another interesting thing about him was uh, his association with the jazz music and the jazz uh, uh kind of beating it, beating it generation that was coming out of New York. Uh, so if you think about jazz, you know, it's, it's kind of this trusting of your head and your, and your heart and, and, and in a lot of ways your hands as well. And I think abstract artists can relate to that because a lot of them know how to draw traditionally or illustrate traditionally, but they trust in the moment that they can create something unique. They can, they can, the, the whole process can, can kind of be a, a part of it. And so we often kind of talk about that in the class with, with jazz music. And there's a couple of pictures of him, uh, again, kind of immersing himself in the entire canvas. And I, I particularly like to do this as well. I, I don't paint on the floor as much as I, I guess I used to when I was younger. I like to paint more on, a, on an easel or a wall now. But um, being kind of a, a larger person, uh, I, I like to move my hands. And it almost becomes kind of like a dance. You know, you don't think about the mark. You just react to the moment. And I think that's what's really kind of beautiful about abstract art. And so we actually got you guys some. Uh, kits that we uh, we have at the library, and if you haven't picked one up one of the, one of those up yet, uh, we should have some more available. And we would uh, like to share the the workshop video. We just recorded basically a few techniques that you can do if you enjoy this kind of art. Um, so we'd love to show you that now. I think they're working on the audio right now, guys, but uh, we look forward to sharing that with you. What's up? This is Justin from Martha Hardway. We're going to look at abstract expressionism. We're going to do a, a messy painting using some of the tools here. Uh, we've got palette knives, we've got brushes, toothbrush, a uh, shoestring, some diluted paint, uh, a couple of different size canvases. I'm going to go ahead and start with this uh, larger of the two. And a lot of times when I start a painting like this, uh, I want to do an underpainting. So we're gonna use a little bit of yellow using our foam brush. I'm just gonna cover the surface. There's really no rhyme or reason to, to the rhythm of this. Um, I just like to be aggressive, if that makes sense. And compositionally, I just wanna make some marks that you know, have a little personality. Uh, I'm not overthinking the process by any means. And I don't wanna cover all of the white, the gesso, but I wanna want to leave a mark. So after you're satisfied with what we would call like a underpainting, a few more strokes here, looks pretty good. Then I like to take the smaller foam brush or really any size and uh, 
dilute a color that complements what I just laid down. And then just kind of trust in the process. Trust that I can kind of splatter a few drip marks on here and not overthink it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Again, I'm not really thinking about where I'm going. I'm just trusting in, trusting in the tool, trusting in my hand. A lot of abstract expressionism is just trusting your head and your heart to connect in the right place. And I got an institutional toothbrush. If you didn't get one of our kits, uh, any good old toothbrush will work. And what you want to do is you want to dilute it. You want to um, you want to dip it in the water and get it pretty wet. And then pick a color of your choosing. Everybody got at least one color in the kits. I'm just kind of giving you a combination of all of them. Uh, and then I like to use my index finger or my middle finger and just kind of aggressively kind of place my hand over the brush and just splatter. That's really what you want to do. And again, trusting your hand with the mark, just kind of covering the surface. And you can almost formulate a little bit of an airbrush technique if you have enough paint on your brush. And the closer you get to the surface, the more it's going to look like that. It's going to look almost like an aerosol effect. Make sure you have some rags. It's going to be messy. <laughs> you can take a butter knife or a palette knife in this case. And again, just kind of grab a color, something you think will look good with what you're working on. And just make some marks. A lot, of, a lot of the abstract stuff is just don't think, just do, right? Trust your hands. There's no such thing as a mistake in an abstract painting. You're just making marks, moving. There's a rhythm to it. A lot of times when I personally paint in my studio, I like to do this on a really large canvas. So my whole body gets involved in the process. And that's what Jackson Pollock did is he would... He would paint on the floor. He'd paint these massive mural sized paintings and his whole body would get involved. So we're gonna use a brush here um, and kind of do the, the same thing. We're gonna get it wet and attempt to do like a, kind of like a bird's eye view drop. And you're allowing randomness to kind of fall into this process, spontaneity, if you will. So if you get it wet enough and you make some marks that are that are able to drip, you can kind of put your canvas upright and let those drips go as long as you want. I don't have a ton of water on them, so they're not gonna to run too far here. But again, while it's wet, you can do things you can't do when it dries. So you do have to kind of be in the moment. Take a yarn, piece of string. In my case, I got a shoestring here. And uh, you can dip that in some diluted water as well. Um, if you got a couple cups of water going, you, you know, the, obviously the more water that's mixed with the paint, the more transparent it's going to lay down, but also the, the wetter the actual paint will become. And we're using all acrylic here. It's all water-based. And just kind of let your hand get heavy. And let it, let it kind of smack that canvas, if you will. Almost like dead weight. And you can really get some spontaneous movements if you do that. Those are a lot of fun. Everybody's got an old shoestring or a piece of yarn or something. So... As you can see, this stuff's starting to drip quite a bit. I'm going to use a little bit of the oil pastels now. Uh, oil pastels, I, I just like using them because I'm a mixed media artist, but you know, just a couple of gestures here and there, just add to the composition. You can use your fingers. So the, the, the deeper you kind of rub into the surface, the, the more of a effect you're going to get. Um, this is kind of more of that outsider art, you know, this is kind of breaking the rules, just kind of throwing down whatever looks good. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to drop this smaller canvas, and this was white. I just laid down yellow before we started. Uh, in fact, the same yellow I started with on the larger one. So you can do that as well. It's an underpainting. kind of adds a, a, a brighter color to it. You can take an oil, oil stick or an oil pastel and just kind of lay down a complementary color. That's one way to start a painting like this. Again, just not really thinking about it, just laying it down. And then kind of looking at all the techniques that we've got. So let's do a palette knife again. I think that looks like a lot of fun. Uh, green complements yellow, secondary, so it's kind of kind of a cool way to lay down your first gestural marks, if you will. And the more, more abstract painting you do, the more confident and comfortable you'll become. Uh, again, using stuff like toothbrushes is just, it's just fun. Anybody can do it. Uh, I'm just going to take some more black and just kind of try to get my hands, hands dirty. I, you know, I'm not happy unless my my hands are covered in paint. That means I've had a good day in the studio, I guess. 
but you can kind of see that airbrush come out a little bit better on this one because it had more paint on the actual toothbrush. I like to use my fingers quite honestly. I, I use fingers more than I use brushes half the time. So if you feel comfortable, it's a great way to kind of get your hands loose. And especially if you're just doing layering like I'm doing, um, just let your hand move. Trust your head and your heart like a jazz musician. Uh, you can dilute it as well with any common spray bottle. I'm just using an old alcohol bottle here that I've cleansed out, rinsed out. Um, got a little bit of red paint in there, but I'm gonna get it with black and uh, you know, basically hit the hit the black I just splattered, and it created a huge surface of of paint that I can now move around any way I want to. So that may look a little dramatic. I'm gonna use my palette knife in just a second here and just move it around a little bit. But let's get a, a little bit more of the splatter on top of it. Because it's very freeing when you have wet paint. You know, that it can be kind of scary when you cover a piece with this much of a splatter, but uh, have fun, move it around, see what you can do. Because it's so wet, you can remove it, you can move it around. So you can kind of reveal some of that yellow or your underpainting. Um, Make it kind of messy if you want. Control the chaos, right? That's what these abstract artists were doing. They were, they were doing non-objective work, right? There's, there's no identifiable objects in this piece. You know, there's no faces, no, no things, no places, uh, no objects. Uh, abstract expressionism came predominantly after World War II, and you know, a lot of people were, were very unhappy with the state of the world, and so they wanted to kind of start over, and that's what these artists did. You know, predominantly on the East Coast, New York, and guys like Jackson Pollock were instrumental in, in putting New York on the map, if you will, uh, prior to this movement. You know, they were 30 years behind Europe, so it was exciting to see how much notoriety they got um, as a result of things they were working on. So again, here's two examples of, uh, you know, different sizes, different methods. Uh, this one's still relatively wet. We can make it even more wet. See the gesturing? Um, and just let that stuff fall a little bit. I'll let that dry a little bit. And that's that's about that's about it. You can just have some fun with some of the stuff that we gave you in the kits. Uh, if you didn't get a kit, use your household items, butter knives, any kind of uh, brush will work, shoestrings, water-based paint. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you can see, that's just a fun, it's a fun lesson. Um, if you've never done that kind of work before, uh, I, I definitely recommend just giving it a shot. Uh, it's it's pretty freeing, wouldn't you say, Matt? Yeah, I think that it's, you know, one of the, the most free forms of art. Um, so often as artists, we're inhibited by our expectations of what things should be. And I think that that's a great entry point into um, just allowing self-expression to happen and, and, and the concept of exploring um, creative techniques. You know, some of the coolest work that we've seen come out of the program has been just the explorative pieces. Uh, I, I especially love the the abstract kind of uh, found object pieces that come out, which are you know definitely linked to the abstract expressionist lessons. You know, and, and then they bring in their stamps and whatever else they find in their cells to really express themselves. So uh, I encourage everybody that watches that video to definitely check it out or give it a try. You know, even if you don't have a kit to try out, you know, some techniques with just different things around your house, as long as they're safe and you're allowed to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We've seen some fun stuff, like guys painting with uh, coffee. Um, we had a guy take some dandelions off of the prison yard and smear them into the painting when we were working at the camp a couple years ago, um, one of the, the lower uh, security prisons in the, in the complex we uh, teach us at. So uh, like Matt said, I mean, it, the window's wide open as to how creative you can be. Um, we've seen guys take fruit punch off of their, their trays and, you know, dilute that stuff and uh, really have a lot of fun, break open uh, institutional pens and just drip them kind of like that bird's eye view, things like that. So, um, you know, have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed it. And we thank you so much um, to the library and to uh, Pueblo for, for having us today. And we want to say a special thank you to Matt and Justin for, you know, providing us this really cool and, in, you know, insightful way into art. Um, this was art, art the hard way, um, create creativity.
creativity from the inside. I um, mean, this was the Jackson Pollock edition. If she can give me a give me a good Vanna White here, yeah. So so we'd like to say say thank you very much to Matt and Justin again. This was you know art the hard way, creativity from the inside, and we just can't say thank you enough for coming with us. Um, look forward to some more cool cool and exciting things that are happening from us um, and this partnership between us and. Matt and Justin. So we can't wait to show you guys some more cool things. Keep tuned in and uh, tune in next time to see us. Huh? Bye, you guys. <laughs>